and welcome to my next tutorial about Prepomex. This time I will show you how to connect a edge of a shell part to surface of a solid part. Let's import the geometry first and create a new model. Uh, and meanwhile I will tell you uh, what's the purpose of such modeling approach. And uh, this is quite commonly used when um, we model a component that can be treated as shell, uh, but has a region uh, that we need to model more accurately. Uh, we need more accurate results in a specific area and solid elements are necessary in particular region. As you can see we have a simple example of a beam. Uh, this, this will be a cantilever beam fixed at this end and we have a sh solid uh, part right here and there's also a shell part and they are supposed to be connected. Uh, of course for the purpose of analysis we need a spe special constraint between the edge of the s shell part and uh, surface of the solid part. Uh, and I will show you how uh, this can be done in Prepomex. Let's mesh the parts first. I will define meshing parameters for both of them. This will be 6 mm of maximum element size. I will confirm this and create a new mesh for both parts at once. They will be meshed with solid and shell elements respectively since the software automatically recognizes type of the part. Uh, now I will create a material. Uh, this will be a typical uh, material to use in most of the videos. This will be steel uh, and I will specify uh, proper uh, parameters. Mm, and now I can also create two sections. The first one will be solid section and this will be applied to the solid part. Uh, and then the next one will be a shell section applied to this part right here. Uh, but of course we need to consider the thickness uh, so I can use the tool uh, called query uh, distance and this will let me measure the uh, distance here to properly model the shell thickness. As you can see the distance uh, here is 20 millimeters uh, so I can specify that in the definition of uh, shell section uh, this is uh, 20 millimeters. Uh, and I will apply this section to uh, the shell part right here. Uh, now this is defined uh, and let's proceed uh, to uh, the rest of the setup. For now let's keep the part where we define the connection between those two regions. Uh, I will define a step, this will be static step, uh, standard settings uh, and I will specify boundary conditions, this will be fixed constraint at this end uh, and also I will specify load, uh, I will use surface traction uh, it will be applied to this edge of the shell and uh, this will work in y direction and the value uh, will be uh, 2000 newtons. Uh, so that's it when it comes to the definition of, of the model, but we still need to connect these two parts together. Uh, I will show you two ways to do this. Uh, we'll run an analysis two times and you will see uh, what's the difference between the two uh, possible approaches. So let's start from the first approach. This will be uh, just tie constraint. Uh, I should note, I should add that unlike Abacus, uh, Calculix doesn't have uh, special shell to solid coupling constraint, uh, but there are other ways to realize, realize such connection and that's what I'm going to show you today. So let's start from the first approach. Uh, I will search for contact pairs uh, since in this new version of Prepomex there's a uh, tool to automatically search for tie constraints and contact pairs and this should show me the right uh, pair right here. Uh, it auto automatically detected the surface of the solid part and edge of the shell part and I uh, left it at, as default uh, type of tie. I co will confirm this and we will run the analysis and see if this connection works properly or not. So let's submit and let's see uh, how the, the results will look like. As you can see it solved very fast. Uh, here are the results. Uh, let's start from the deflection. Uh, let's see how it compares with the analytical value. Uh, here's the analytical value of the deflection that we expect. And you can see that it's pretty good uh, if we check the, the deflection right here. However, if we decide to check the stresses, uh, you will see uh, that they are uh, severely distorted. You can notice that the stresses uh, in this region of the, in this in the region of this connection are uh, distorted due to the uh, constraint uh, that was used, and uh, for that for this reason we could use different type co of constraint that doesn't produce such uh, the results, uh, because we could of course mm, ignore this region and and check the stresses in in further areas, but uh, this uh, really uh, changes the results in a way that that we don't uh, really want here. So let's go back to the setup uh, and uh, I will replace the tie constraint with uh, something else. Uh, let's uh, for now uh, deactivate this tie constraint maybe, of course I could also delete it, uh, but let's de deactivate it. Uh, and now I will create a surface interaction and uh, this will be contact interaction, this time we'll use contact but this will be special type of contact. 
let's define surface behavior. Mm, so that's the behavior in the normal direction. Normally we use uh, the hard contact type and just leave it right like that with the default setting. But this time I will switch to the last type, this is tight contact. We will use tight contact to, to simulate this connection. In addition, I also have to specify friction uh, and I can leave uh, the default value of friction coefficient. It doesn't matter in this case that the value can be arbitrary. So let's leave it like that and uh, we don't have to worry about that because the contact is tight anyway. It's, it's a contact that can't separate or slide. So, uh, so that's not a, a problem really. Uh, let's confirm this. Uh, and now I have to search uh, for the contact pairs again. This time I'll switch back to, to contact, uh, not a tie constraint. Uh, let's search. Uh, it found the right uh, connection. Uh, I can maybe switch to uh, adjustment and confirm this. Mm, and now I have contact pair defined. Let's submit the analysis again. It also sold quite fast. Let's check the results. Uh, here's the deflection uh, in the y-axis. Let's compare this with the analytical solution. Uh, you can check the, the values uh, right here. And let's also take a look at uh, the stress distribution. As you can see, it's much better than in the case of, uh, of the previous uh, constraint that was used to model this connection. Uh, now the, there, are, there are no such effects, there's no distortion of the stress around this area of connection. Uh, we can also mm, check the uh, normal stress in this direction and we can compare it with analytical solution. Uh, here I specified that I want the stress at the mm, connection, just at the connection, so I specified the, uh, the length of the shallow region and that's the stress that we expect there. Uh, so let's use the query tool mm, and uh, verify the, the stress uh, right at this connection as you can see. Uh, the value is uh, is very close to the analytical uh, solution. Uh, I could also check the stresses in other regions, uh, but uh, in this area here, uh, it will be mm, affected by boundary conditions, so it's better to check it in other locations. And uh, this region here seems like a good idea to check, uh, since previously the stresses here were uh, severely distorted. So uh, that's it for this uh, PrePOMAX tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. As always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.